Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 38 of the Talking with the Dad podcast. Stevie, how are we doing this evening, my friend? Doing good. I thought you were about to bring back the sponsors bit, and I was like, I wasn't ready for this. No, no, uh, I, I no, got, I got no, it. no, no. We, we'll, we'll rehash that eventually. I think we should do it in public, right? Like, we're out just hanging out somewhere, and we just break into the bit without informing my wife or anyone <laughs> around. <what's> Deal. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. I love a good, like, uh, I love a good, like, inside troll to other people you're with. Absolutely. I'm down with that 100%. Hey, so guess what? Good news. Good news. Patio is open officially for the 110 grill. You know, oh, your, boy, yes. you know your boy is going to get dinner next week, even if oh, I have to pick it up. Man, that sounds that so place. good, dude. It sounds so good. Um, we're talking about food. I had uh, Jake's Wayback Burger today. Have you ever had Jake's Wayback Burger? No, no. Where did you get that at? So it, there's a place near us. I'll, I can send you a location okay. afterwards. Uh, I'm not trying to dox us here. Um, <laughs> it is. I, I love Jake's. I, I've eaten there plenty of times. Um, and like, I haven't had it in a while and I went back It's open again. You could do pick up or take out or whatever, or you can fucking sit in there if you want, I guess. Um, and I get it and I come home and I eat it and I'm like, man, I forgot how fucking good Jake's Wayback Burger is. I think it's on the same level as five guys. It's better mm-hmm. than in and out. It's better than Shake Shack. It's better than Wahlburgers. Wahlburgers is fucking awful. Um, is it? I've never had it. It looks hold on. so good. So it's not awful, but okay. for a sit-down restaurant, which is what it is, right? It's a sit-down yeah. burger house. It's not as good as Five Guys, but okay. it's a different experience. It's it's pretty neat. I've been to the, I've been to like the really nice one in Boston, right by Fenway. So All right. there's one that's like literally within visual distance of Fenway. Yeah, it's, like, that's, it's that's literally like across the street. Yeah, 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 it, it, yeah, yeah. No, you're 100 percent right. Um, I've been to that one. Um, okay. And I figured that would be a good one, right? And, you know, it wasn't, it didn't blow my socks off, you know? You know, got a shoe off, maybe, but, n- you know, not both socks. And uh, <laughs> Jake's Wayback Burger, man, I'm sorry for all the California folk that listen. I know there's a few of you. Fuck, man. In and Out is disgusting compared to, like, a, to Five Guys or a uh, Jake's, man. I thought Jake's is, is incredible. Here's the thing I always like. So the first time I went to In-N-Out was the first time I, I moved to California. And my buddy took me there. And well, like, he wasn't my buddy. He was a You got to go to the right one, front. though, right? That's from that's what yeah, you told we, me. We, we went to the one in Hollywood, right next to the Hollywood High. And I wasn't I initially by imp- that, one. That, that place sucks. I wasn't initially impressed by, uh, by In-N-Out the first time. Okay. It wasn't until I had it uh, in Burbank and then the one in North Hollywood. And I was okay. like, all right, so this is a good... This is a good stand burger, right? But there are a lot of other places in California yeah, where you man. can get a better burger, but maybe not the same quality of meat. Like Tommy's Burgers in California mm-hmm. makes a very good chili burger. But okay. the beef patty, the, the actual beef patty is crap, right? You can also go to Smash Burgers. You can go to, uh, there's a few Japanese burger spots. Sure, I forget sure. the name of them. And, and they're like just amazing. But, uh, yeah, man, I got to be honest. We went to go see uh, the Joker, and when I had that burger from the 110 Grill, so that was amazing. I, see, that but was amazing. I don't consider that like very good, right? Don't get me wrong. Incredible. I've had a few burgers on that caliber before, and I thought that was like very, very high tier. But I feel like that's different. That's like a sit-down that's yeah. like almost that's a sit down restaurant, a restaurant that happens to, yeah. to do a burger. Like Shake Shack, In-N-Out, Five Guys, Jake's. Um, yeah. Is it What a Burger that's down in Texas? Um, yeah, Whataburger. those guys, right? Oh, that those, place is amazing. I've never had a What a Burger, um, but those guys are in like a tier together, right? Yeah. And then obviously under that's like Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger yeah. King. Burger King's not even the fucking in the conversation. I think with fast food burgers, it goes Carl's Jr. Oh man, I hate. I don't like Carl's Jr. But I, go ahead. There's a story uh, there the, somewhere. Some people think it's grainy, like they feel like the burger's grainy or something like that. Did you have that experience? Is that like I've, I, I don't, I, I've never turned down food because of a texture. So um, uh, no, that would not be me. I, I can't eat wet chicken. Won't do it. Yeah, I think we've had this conversation before. <laughs> but wait, hold on a second. That rules out chicken marsala. Oh, not eating it, dude. That's like I'll, that's one of my favorite meals. I will literally tell them, take that back. That, that's get one that, of my favorite meals. Get 100%. that juice off of there. Chicken parm? That. That's kind of... Nah. Yeah, it's like I, yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah, a chicken parm guy? I, it's not my favorite food. I, you know, I'm not really big on Americanized Italian food. There are, really? I, there are big... There are dishes oh. like... Uh, 
traditionally made in Italian Italian uh, recipes and stuff that I enjoy, but chicken parm and stuff like that. No, 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 Have you ever had a done. traditional Italian lasagna? No, that sounds amazing. So the way that they do it, right? And I'm gonna butcher this. I, I'm not a chef, guys. Uh, I, just, I know a right. little bit about cooking. I, I feel like I cook pretty well for myself. So you know, take that take that with a grain of salt. They do really thin noodles. Right, Ooh. they do the same sheets. So they, they lay it down, and then it's a layer, a very, very thin layer of sauce, noodle, whatever cheese, noodle, sauce, noodle, meat filling. It's like 20 layers. And it's thin noodle, like sauce, meat, cheese, whatever, thin noodle. And then they, you keep just piling it up, and you get a dish like... I don't know, that big. That's like four inches for, for our audio listeners. We, we love you guys. Um, yep. And it's stacked, bro. And it's like 20 layers deep. And it's it's maybe one of the most incredible things, like food experiences I've ever had. Cause like, that sounds amazing. Not like each bite is different. But each bite, you get a, you get a bigger hit of something, right? Because in a lot of occasions, like there's layers where the noodles are touching. They're so thin of like what's You're inside. Hungry. And... You get a little bit, a little bit of a different everything every time, and it's it's like an experience. Man, that literally made me hungry. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. And it's funny because I worked at a, I guess it was, more, it was more of an eatery, but it had a restaurant in it called Manja, and uh, this was in Midtown. And I just remember they had like really good. Uh, one thing I always remember from there is Busqueta. They had the best Busqueta, which is just like kind of like a, a, a what you call it, uh, like an oil appetizer. And that was like amazing. Everything about Buschetta? it was amazing. Buschetta. It's just tomatoes, diced tomatoes, vinegar on bread. <laughs> like oil oh, and vinegar bruschetta. on bread. Bruschetta. Yeah. Bruschetta is uh, a ninja, I believe, from a video game. Yeah. It's Bruschetta. B R U S. Yeah. I actually uh, literally had that tonight. I had Bruschetta tonight. That was, ugh, sounds amazing. It's very cool. Um, yeah. yeah it's a, Zach, you been playing any video games, man? Man, that's a loaded question. You know, you throw these, my, I throw these your way. Uh, yeah, generally, go. and, yeah, and we go into it. Around, like, so the there's therapist. like this is like the only last bit of gaming that we actually do is right. like this. Now you know there are probably listeners who don't even understand that we've started as a gaming channel. We I still are a gaming do. channel. We just you know you we're gotta we're, a, right. we're in the gaming sphere, but actually I yeah. label <laughs> all of our stuff as comedy, comedy. When, when we put it up. I don't know. You know we're trying to be funny here. We're not very good uh, we, at it. We're, we're, we're hope we hope we're funny. We, we'll pay you the last <laughs> jokes, please. Yeah, I mean three dollars a laugh. Um, yeah, we've been we've been replaying the division one. Well, I've been replaying the division one alongside you, experiencing it for the first time, which has been right. incredible. Um, Fun game. I love the division. I really do. There's a special place in my heart for the division. Um, I've been playing a lot of World of Warcraft, and I don't, dude. Have I been playing anything else? I don't think so. That's about it. Yeah, you got back into Tarkov there for a little bit and then kind of... Yeah, there was a huge oh. cheater issue at Tarkov and it just made it not fun, right? Like you would go in and just die to a kid with a speed hacks or an aimbot or something and it was very clear. Um, yeah. So apparently they've, uh, they've fixed a lot of those issues. So maybe I'll revisit, but yeah, I don't know. I've kind of lost a little bit of uh, of love for Tarkov because of how bad the cheating actually is in it. Here's the thing, man, right? I understand hacking a game that isn't going to impact anyone else. Like Game Shark back in the day, you want to beat Contra, you want to beat Star Wars, you can't get past the one boss because it's too hard. That's Game your business. Shark. That's your that's your prerogative. Game Genie, Game Shark, all of it. You know, cheat codes, all that stuff. It does not make sense to me to play an online game yeah, <laughs> and to pretend man. to be fake good. But you know, it's some trollish dude. I'm not saying he's got to be out of shape, but in my mind. It's some fat yeah, trollish yeah, yeah. dude sitting there like, man, my life sucks, but I'm about to go in this lobby. And just yeah, wreck. man. I've never been one to understand why you would want, like, an aimbot or something in a game. It's it's absurd, yeah. right? To me, You're not it's good. no, no. They're not even in the question of even being good. Um, I see. I just don't know, man. I don't know. I, I don't understand what motivates people to do that. Um. I've just never been one of those people. Uh, the only time that we've ever, like, hacked a game was Modern Warfare 2 on the PC after me and Shane both had two accounts at 10th Prestige 70 on PlayStation. We both, you know, uh, transferred over from console to to PC, and we're like, all right, 
we're gonna, we just want 10th Proceed 70 on Modern Warfare 2. So downloaded a, a mod menu, went into a private lobby, just the two of us, leveled ourselves up to 10th Proceed 70, and then removed the mod menu and just went on with our lives. Right? Shane has a VAC ban <laughs> on Steam because of it, um, which they don't go away. You can't appeal and whatever. It's been there for Wait, what 10. is this? Uh, a VAC ban, a Valve anti cheat ban. Um, oh, okay. It's almost 10 years old at this point. It's hilarious. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, that's the only time. And I, I use it to level in a video game. Like, nothing outrageous, nothing crazy. It took 20 minutes. And that's it. You know? Fuck it. You friggin' cheaters. <laughs> 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 yeah, so... Uh... I got to say, playing in Division 1, like, obviously, my first time playing it. Game's a lot of fun. And I had a lot of fun playing Part 2. You know what the best part about the Division 1 is, though? It's just how moody it looks, right? Like, the enemies are generic. You know, that's all. I can take it or leave it. It's on the way to complete the mission, like, running through the city and just looking at, like, the, the, the desperate state that everything's in. And actually, the story for the Division the 1. Plot, the division one is the plot is just way more immersive in this one part two i had some psychopaths talking in my ear the whole time i still don't know what part two was about so i'll maybe go back and play that from the beginning at some point but my, th I my actually, thought with the the division two and i don't mean to, i i don't mean to cut you off even though i do constantly um <laughs> my issue with the division two is everything was spread out too far i think if you yeah. notice in the division one when we're walking around the streets we don't go what a minute i don't think we could run straight for a minute without having an engagement yeah right that's the, that's the one thing they've always uh, people have always loved about call of duty when you except for this new one because this new one's garbage um when you spawn in call of duty 15 seconds until you're in a gunfight that is the maximum amount of time that you will need to get into a gunfight in Call of Duty. If you're going to yep. run from where you spawn to where the action is, right? You know, obviously, you could take more time if you want. But like Battlefield, you could be minutes without seeing anybody. Tarkov, you could be days without seeing anybody. DayZ. I just don't get the appeal of that. <laughs> DayZ, you could be years without seeing a single person. But Call of Duty is 15 seconds to the start, right? Like, every single time. Uh, Overwatch does that really well. Counter-Strike, for the most part, does that pretty well, although no, no respawns. Um, so, yeah, I, the Division, within within 30 seconds to a minute, and if you really think about it, it's probably even less than that, everywhere you go, everywhere you run, there is something to do. You're going to hit an encounter. You're going to hit a side mission. Now, this lessens up to an extent, uh, after we hit 30 and then go through the world tiers. But, um, you know, there's gangs of people roaming the streets doing different things. Like, there's yeah. always something to do. Uh, there are always dogs to kill, birds to kill, rats to kill, civilians we to do not. <laughs> we do not condone the slaughter of animals. Of virtue animals. <laughs> yes, we love animals here at Talking with the Dead. Here's Never the thing, though, about part two, though, the control point situation. It has this very old school feeling of uh, Sims to it, where it's like you got to take care of your control points. Yeah. And I'm, I'm I'm not coming back. Look, I liberated this place. I'm like America. I, I, got, <laughs> I got some freedom. I'm we leave here, a power baby. vacuum and then we leave. Um, yeah. yeah, so that doesn't happen in the Division One. There is no. no control points. There are none of that. But there are a slew of of street bosses right like yeah. we've run into a few um but there are there's one that's in a subway that's very close to a safe house and you can reset it constantly and you just go and kill it and kill it and kill it um yeah. i think the division one has way more replayability than the division two I, I was even playing the division two today i went through yeah. and did all of the um the weekly missions and then the weekly stronghold today and i'm like after i got done with it i'm like that i'm just gonna go play the division one Right, it wasn't as satisfying. Um, but yeah, we're what, 21 right now? We yeah. have five main story missions left, four or five main story missions left, something like that. Yeah. So we're close. We're, we're closing in towards the end. Uh, we'll play at the end um, next week, I would think. We'll hit 30. And then after that... we Getting get to into go, some we, DLCs. Uh, yes, but we get to go to the Dark Zone after that. 
and we got to grind uh, dark zone levels. Um, there's probably no one, no other players in the dark zone. Yeah, uh, we've lost 98 percent of our audience here, guys. We're sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are no like, other players. <laughs> I just saw the average listen time drop. Right <laughs> it's uh, let's find out. Two and a half minutes in. <laughs> um, we'll grind the dark zone, right? So there's probably gonna be no other players in the dark zone, which will be interesting. But there are a even more street bosses and things to do in the dark zone. So and they've yeah. added new dark zones since I've played. They've like yeah, I played and it was only one through five I think, and now there's like six and seven at the up at the top. I'm gonna say this and wrap the the conversation on the division okay. before we get into the subjects. I do want to do over on the dark zone in division two. I was still very new to playing with keyboard and getting used to doing that stuff, so I wasn't at That's the. Right. Yeah. I want. I want to go back. I want to go back in here. for this now. This is the issue, right? It's not right, how go. good you are as a player. It's if do you have that meta build, right? The meta build in Division 2 was the fucking uh, double barrel sawed off pistol sidearm because each shot does 180, 200,000 damage. Uh, so that was that's what we could kill by that day that I was so angry. Yeah. Right. Freaking. But here's I don't think there's anyone in the dark zone. I don't think anyone plays the Division 2 anymore. We'll find out, man. I mean, it's got they got more players in Gears Five. Oh, swing, better swing. Let's get into the. All first. right. Okay. Let's go before we get any further, we are switching our our RSS feed to Anchor. Um, we are now on Spotify, Google Play, still on iTunes under a different RSS feed. We're in all of your favorite podcasting apps, like legitimately Literally. every single one you could possibly be on. We are now on. I will be uploading over the next few weeks. I will be re-uploading all of the content to that. So if you would like to subscribe to our new RSS feed, link will be in the description. Um, it's on Anchor, so it, it's on. Uh, it, it's on. It's on everything, dude. So you know, go check it out. Uh, we'd appreciate you follows. Um, any Spotify users, you have to type in "talking with a dad" without any spaces. Um, actually, might be that way on most platforms. I don't. I don't know why. Yeah. We'll, have to, we'll have to try to figure that out. But no spaces. You'll find our stuff right away. If you made it through the division talk, you're definitely still gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna be the people who follow us on Spotify. So, listen. Right. If, if we if we can watch someone laugh at Kool Aid, sixty four ounces of it, the way we laugh, people can get into the division talk. I'm gonna funny. go ahead. I'm gonna ask you about a uh, topic one here, man. Uh, Wreckful passed away, so I I know nothing yeah. about this con this content creator, so I'm just gonna let you tell me. Here's the what issue happened. Is I don't either. Um, okay. Wreckful was a staple in the World of Warcraft community, um, and by staple, I literally mean was one of maybe the most prolific and earliest content creators in World of Warcraft. Uh, widely regarded as one of the best PvP players in World of Warcraft, uh, multiple time MLG World of Warcraft PvP champion. Um. Yeah. Unfortunately, tragically, not unfortunately, tragically, uh, he took his own life a few days ago, and uh, yeah, he's been dealing with mental health for a long time, from what I understand. Uh, reading a lot of things about it, I, I again, I've never watched the guy. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know of him before this, but I've done, I've done quite a bit of research because you know when someone in the community that I'm a part of, you know, just the greater content creation community. Um, when something happens, you know, it makes its way to me and I find out and, you know, I, I like to do my, my due diligence and, and give that person the respect that they deserve. Right. That's pretty sad, man. Uh, the thing it's about tragic. this, is, like, no, extremely tragic. The thing about, uh, I think he was 31. I, an extremely young man. Yeah. Not that, it, not that suicide has an age gap on it, but it's always so sad with something in regards to like gaming and streaming and content creation because, like any other creative uh, medium, people tend to be isolationists. And I don't always think that's indicative of someone having suicidal ideations, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, it's one of those things you wish that and you hope that people have support around them to take them out of these isolated moments right and you're yeah. and it's the thing the tricky thing about suicide is you know there's the very drastic case where no one had any signs leading up to it but then in retrospect when you start examining the person's behavior leading up to the mm -hmm. the event itself but then there's the other thing that we talked about too where it's like the uh i'm just i'm gonna try to be respectful about this the oh, caravan let, let, let me let me uh let's get a few other things out first um yeah the single biggest esport virtual gathering happened in world of warcraft uh in one of the in one of the churches around the map i don't i don't remember exactly 
uh, uh-huh. where it was. Um, there was over there was multiple thousand players there play uh, paying respects to Reckful uh, on, oh, on, on the server that he put, uh, played on. Um, yeah, I mean, the guy was. I hate to say it, he was clearly in a manic state um, before beforehand. Did like I don't know. He tweeted like I don't know nine times in a few minutes. Clearly, you know, reaching progressing. Out. Not it wasn't reaching out. Um, but it is just clear that the guy was not well. Um, yeah, and and tragically took his own life. So it was yesterday uh, actually. Any uh, any family members come out and speak about the the situation yet? Uh, I don't think family members have necessarily. Um, but his ex girlfriend for sure has, and they okay. were like recently broken up. I think. So, oh, okay. Another another wrinkle to the story there. Uh, I don't actually know a hundred percent on that, so don't quote me on that. But that's what it seems like. Um, yeah. So it's good that it was like an amazing turnout. I think uh, Zach tweeted something. I mean, amazing turnout for the uh, the memorial and uh and to represent people representing their love for him. I think Zach tweeted about this the other day, and I read it and I meant to retweet, but you know I don't know how to do that stuff. But it's extremely uh, poignant. Was it that, me? No, you uh you actually. I texted you. No, no, no. You tweeted something. No, I think. I didn't. You didn't tweet anything. No, no, See, no, no. no. I'm, I'm literally I'm looking at my profile right now. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't go on Twitter. But uh, I think it's important that people know that they that you reach out to people, and that people know that you that you do appreciate them. Not that that's going to stop it, but you never get these chances back. Yeah, I had a few sure. situations uh, during this whole uh, pandemic event where there were people I wanted to reach out to every day, and for one reason or another, because I usually because I haven't talked to them in a while, I do that thing where I'm like, well, it's too late to just jump back into it now. One of the guys was my barber, who was a really sweet guy over in the barber shop in the mall, and he always always texted me, wanted to talk to me about criminal reform projects that he had going on. He knew I had some experience in that, and I always just never returned any of his text messages. And then the day I go, like, oh, man, I'm going to finally – let me text him back. Obviously, I have time to talk now. Yeah. We can really pal. I go to look on Facebook randomly before I go text him, and his wife had posted a picture of him, and he passed away. And I say all that to say you don't get too many opportunities to to reach out. I was telling you about a friend of mine who yeah. I hadn't spoke to in a month, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to get into the circumstances of his passing, but – uh yeah, you don't get this time back. So if you think there are people that you want to reach out to, there's no perfect time than today. <laughs> yeah. No perfect time than no, today for sure. to reach out. Right. And um yeah, you know, you never get the you never really get that opportunity to say those final words that you know, you might have wanted to say. Right. Absolutely. You know, so you know, just make sure, you know, reach out to your friends, make sure, you know, make sure they know that they're loved and and you know, anyone out there that that might need, you know, assistance or help or whatever again i know i said this like last week or the week before but uh you know for sure mine and and i'm sure steve twitter dms are always open mine for sure is i don't know how to use my dms if you want to reach me just uh dm zach and he'll make sure the dm gets to me for sure yeah 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 for (laughs) sure you know always open we'd be more than happy you know to speak with you know anybody really for sure um this actually leads directly into my next topic uh, What's the that? effects of streaming and content creation on your mental health. Right? Take it away, buddy. Because this is uh this is something near and dear, right? I've I've done a lot of content creation in my life, and um, you know, Steve even nailed it on the head earlier that a lot of these people are isolationists, and unfortunately, a lot of people in the community, uh, Twitch, YouTube, whatever, uh, Mixer, ha, huh? um, these guys, a lot of these people, all deal with you know depression, uh, a lot of like mental health disorders because they're so isolated they don't get that human interaction that like you really need you might not think you need it you might not like people but really like a true person to person human interaction is super necessary for your psyche i think um absolutely getting sunshine is super yes. necessary for your psyche and, and just for your body in general so it's yeah there's a lot of a lot of negative effects you know, I I don't know how to how to curb it. I don't know how to how to stop it or, or help it. But I just like to at least help to bring awareness to it for sure. 
Yeah, I mean, we, we got to look at the symptoms of it. It's funny because the the whole dichotomy of it is it's so weird. So look at how we were talking about the doctor disrespect thing, right? And this subculture, this is a huge deal. This is a huge deal to like bigger content creators, yeah. but it's an even huger deal to his fans, right? The people who support him because they feel like that's their representation. This guy brings a level of joy and a in uh, an outlet to them. But just think of how many smaller streamers he inspires, right? Sure. Smaller streamers looking to get into that same level of platform or believing they can do it because he's done it and then you think about how that would affect them like the hours people put in for streaming right the time yeah. it take they take out of their day the the financial burden of building for machines sure. and uh and then the the fear you live in if your your only rig you have if one component goes out there's a lot of stuff I've, that goes I've into been it there. i've been there <laughs> And then there's also the checking to see uh, how many times your VODs have been viewed, how many times the stream right. itself, how many followers. The numbers, the numbers the algorithm. can be daunting. Man. The numbers can be daunting for sure. And it, it becomes, uh, for lack of a better term, it becomes an idol that's unfulfilling and that and it's it's drudgery. Like yeah. you hope more comes from it. But here's here's another thing, right? Your job, right? You go, you work eight hours a day, eight hours, Horrible. five days a week, right? Yeah. You're going to make that same amount of money every week, no matter what. But with content creation, if you stream for eight hours, you make, say, $500. What's to stop you from streaming another eight hours and making another $500, right? Yeah. And that turns into 16 hours of your day. And yep. why not just do that seven days a week and yeah. make, you know, whatever that money is, a thousand bucks a day, seven grand a week, you know, times that by 52 is incalculable, if you ask me, um, <laughs> right? What stops you from doing that for two, three, four years straight without ever taking a break? You maybe you go to a con, yep. uh, a, con for, a con here and there, right? But what what stops you from from doing those things? And that really doing the same thing for sixteen hours a day, eight to sixteen hours a day, every yeah. day with no like mental sabbatical is it will ruin a person. I don't care who you are, right? Yeah. You could be the, you could be you know, the strongest willed person I've ever met and doing that will absolutely break a person. So, yeah, and it's also because, and that's why the contract is so big, right? That's why that's because it's providing a level of security. I would say that, uh, I, I want to preface what I'm about to say by saying that your financial gain is only a small part of what you do as a passion. So I don't want anyone to base it off of that. I do recognize though how important it is to be compensated fairly for what you do. But I think the contracts bring a level of stability. And I've heard multiple streamers say that. Nick Merckx, Doc, Ninja, Shroud, having a contract yeah. saying that you're, that you're allotted Pistilli's this money. He's talked about it in depth. Yeah. Um, Clean now is signing a new contract. Talk about it in depth, right? Like I've watched Bodhi a ton. Bodhi's talked about all yeah. of that in depth. It, yeah. it, it does, right? Because a lot of those are, you know, you have to stream X amount of hours a month. And I think it's 60, right? Yeah. You know, you could do that in a, a week. Easy. Yeah. I've done yeah. way more than that in a week, right? Yeah. Like that's easy. Most of the contracts are based off of 60 hours a month, I believe. Um, and that's reasonable. But what's yeah. stopping you from doing 60 hours a week you know yeah no absolutely you know it also is a uh... hey what's up buddy yeah sorry about that guys uh so what i was saying was that uh you know we we're talking about the contracts and the stability that that brings and um i think another thing that's interesting too about this whole situation so some of my favorite YouTubers have all been saying the same thing lately. Obviously, different than streaming. Some of them do have. They're getting more. They're more cognizant of their streaming schedule. So I've been seeing right, people, right. Who, people who normally record starting to stream on YouTube, but they're all worried about getting deplatformed nowadays, right? For saying some for saying that one wrong thing because they've yeah. been in the camera in front of the camera for so long. Other people, their shows are political in nature. And they're like, well, now that you're not allowed to have a dissenting political view, like I have my fa one of my favorite podcasters, a man that like I truly respect, said today before his podcast, he's like, hey, there's a good chance. I hope you guys heard the the address for the website, alternative uh, places yeah. to, to hear us. He's like, because there's a good chance after this episode, we're more than likely going to be the platform. And he's not the type of guy to try to drum up shock views. Like that's insane, dude. He's, he's like, you know, he's like, this. it's it's going to come down any day now. 
we're, we're probably going to get deplatformed on Facebook, IG, wow, YouTube. And he's like, yeah. yeah, I just want you guys to know where you can find us at. That's stressful, right? I can imagine yeah. that doesn't play well in your mental health either. But it's, you know, it, it's the it's the idea, I think, of, you know, I, okay, I could do one YouTube video today. And that'll make yeah. me X amount of dollars. But what if I yep. do five, yep. right? And you work for <laughs> 22 hours straight or whatever it is. And doing that, I think, is probably the worst part of it because that's what it is. It becomes a... You know, a hobby that makes you money, and then it becomes a you know a job, and then it becomes an obsession, right? Yeah. And, and once it reaches that level, you're in too deep. You know, there's yeah. a there's a a real need for, you know, uh, taking time off, taking days away. You know, Absolutely. days without social media, those are really really nice. Um, I've heard a lot of my uh, a lot of my like I guess heroes in podcasting or, or like people I look up to in podcasting and, and like cars and like. Uh, and just like YouTube content in general. Um, one of the guys specifically has taken all of the social media off of his phone. Right. Uh, I, at one point he disabled comments on his Instagram because he didn't want to read them anymore. Um, that makes sense. He, he removed, yeah, all the social media off of his phone. He only uses it on his computer, uh, including like Instagram and Twitter and his Facebook and everything. Right. He only uses it on his computer. And he says like, you know, the rest of his day is just so much better because of it. You know, he went from yeah. eight hours of screen time a day down to like, I think he said two, right? Kind of cutting that out of your day and just like living in the moment is so much better than always being worried about, you know, being up on the news, being the first person to post something about a, a situation. Like that's like, yeah, that, that has to kill your mental health for sure. No, it does. And it, because it puts a man, the level of stress that you're describing that people are under to perform like that. It's just almost very similar. Someone's going to get mad about this to the same exact thing that the Wall Street guys and the pit feel right. Yeah. Those guys, those guys got to be down in that pit. <laughs> but well before the bell rings, you know, they got to be yeah. ready to go. And, uh, I think another thing about streaming, too, is like you. I, I was, you know, today I was listening to someone and they were talking about the whole ninja thing and his wife was beefing with someone else on yeah, you know, XQC. On, so, yeah, on that social media and it's just like with the way that the climate is right now it's heightened the stress and that isolation because you can't say anything i think someone that does it really well is probably shroud which is like there's this is where his uh his personality really plays to his benefit here which is he, he's not going to get sucked into a lot of stuff right you know yeah, at a he certain, does it in drama for sure yeah um, and that Man, there are so many people that that everyone gets sucked into drama at one point or another. It's yeah. Just it'll happen, right? Yeah. Um, Shroud's been very good at it, but Shroud was also come from, comes from the competitive scene, right? There's yeah. enough drama within the competitive scene itself, right? Yeah. You know, not performing, and, and you're going to get benched, or going to get traded, or you know, exactly. you're going to have to, you're going to get kicked out of the team house, right? Like, so he came from his own set of drama and i think that it just being the mellow person that he is i think it, it lends well and he doesn't use social media very much i don't think so that yeah. helps yeah and it's, i mean look at how we're like intently watching like doc's entire life has been completely changed in one fair swoop i'm not saying he didn't deserve so, it or didn't deserve it allegedly we don't know what happened as of yet right, right now that's still, fair. that's still fair yeah so it's just like it's a lot to put in. I think one of the things I've noticed about you've been doing this way longer than me. But hold on, way hold on. Let me, let's, I'm gonna get to one one thing on the t- on the doc thing quick. Yeah. Doc, Doc's life has changed. Guys yeah. hasn't. He plays a character. No, one hundred percent right. And but th- being able but to guy, push all of that stress and drama off of a character, off onto a character, you know, as long as there's not something going on with his personal life. Guy's yeah. life is probably the same. Guy's life is better for the doc life, right? Yeah. You know, if we were playing characters and, you know, I get up away from this mic and walk away, you know, I'm, I'm Zach, right? Like, no. And absolutely. I'm super true to myself on here as well. But, you know, if I were someone that, you know, if I was playing a character, you know, I, I, I get up and separate myself from that. I've always been very good at that. And I think uh, one of the reasons why doc, or guy beam does that is because he's good at that he separates himself from the character and that has happened on numerous occasions where you see doc switch that character off and respond to some some really heartfelt uh twitch yeah. message or um or the, cry, si- yeah right the situation where um you know he was unfaithful to his wife you know that's the only time i've ever seen the guy beam account 
ever being used for Doc. I haven't looked at it recently. Um, yeah. But you know, he separates himself from the character. So I, I think I think that is actually kind of nice for him. No, I, so so let me clarify. What I was saying is, Guy's life has been impacted by this too, because his entire living has now come to a complete halt. Now that's not to say he doesn't have a source of revenue coming in right now, but you're hoping that is not something related to his marriage. That's my biggest hope. It's not something related to his marriage or his family. And this is just some bitter contra- con- contractual uh, dispute. But just imagine not being someone like Doctor Disrespect, aka Guy. Where you know you get you get a perma ban for who it's knows what happened, man. It's happened. But I w- I would I'll say this again. I'll reemphasize this, man. There is mental health help available and can be tailored. A treatment plan can be tailored for any time. And I think one thing that anyone who's doing twenty four hour streaming, I mean, twenty four hour content creation, is saying this is your sole career. Definitely look into my suggestion, not in order. Looking into getting into some uh, some help. Like not help as in like you need it, but everyone needs to talk to someone. Yeah, like so I you're agree. Definitely reach out and it's like you know destigmatize further what therapy does and what it provides to people. And also, like Zach said, I think Zach said something really good one day where it's like you know this whole COVID thing. Uh, uh, sorry, the pandemic kicked off. No, you can say COVID. You, again. Yeah, we can say COVID again. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank God. <laughs> uh, Dude, we've been saying it for weeks. I don't know how you just read it. <laughs> I don't know. I just black out. But you were talking about how you were going out every day and you would just go, you know, go for a drive, get a sandwich and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Setting these type of stabilizing routines and uh it's it's good for you, man. And also take advantage of the fact that there is a community of people that enjoy you and also you don't have to keep your guard up, but build a safe little circle and a net there for yourself. That's all I got to say about it. I we're here for you. You could definitely hit us up and uh yeah, for sure. No, yeah, we, we, no would, we would definitely be happy to, you know, speak to some of you guys and, and you know, m- even potentially help. One person helped is, you know, is incredible. Yeah. So I see you got here <laughs> the couple of the year. <laughs> Dude, I love these people and I have a different take on it than most people. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lay it out for us. Lay it out for us. The, the armed couple versus the protesters. So let's give some context to this because everything has two sides to the stories. And you know what? You, 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 there's two sides and then there's actually what happened. Yep. And usually you can find that. Do you know the scene. story? That's that's what I'm going to ask. So I let me see if I have it correctly. If I have it correct. The protesters are heading towards the governor or the mayor of this area. St. House. Louis. They're in St. Louis. Right, and they yes. uh, they break into the private community. Correct. And they, they get they uh, scale the gates. They break down the gates, and they but they're marching. But again, this is a gated, closed community, right. zoned. This is trespassing. Zoned for that, yeah, it's zoned for trespassing, and they're marching in a private residential area. They tore so, down the gate, like they tore down a iron gate that closes off the community in St. Louis. Yeah. Like, so bad that they like broke the gate. Like they didn't just yeah. take it off the hinges. They like physically no. broke the gate. No, they went French Revolution on this thing. I'm just trying to like be yeah, pragmatic that's, that's about life. this. Thing. That's life. <laughs> and uh, so they're they're marching down the street, and uh, <laughs> this uh, older couple uh, who apparently uh, wears their their you know they wear their golfing outfits and their polo outfits Dude, in the house. These are like, <laughs> very wealthy people. Extremely wealthy. This is a like twenty five million dollar house, by the way, that they're in yeah. front of. So they uh, they hear this coming out. The uh, the husband in this situation says at this time that he was extremely alarmed. He heard the chanting and he, mm-hmm. you know, they had broken down the gate and he was extremely worried for his wife, property and their dog. So he armed himself oh, uh, with his rifle, which was uh, we can't I can't prove it. But that looked like it might have been semi automatic <laughs> to automatic itself. His her his wife got the 22 out. I believe that she has in her hand. Yeah. Right? So I can't identify. Exactly, I know a little bit about guns. Um, I can't identify exactly what kind of pistol this is. This is a very, very small caliber. Um, yeah. Seemingly a 22. It is is it's a 22? definitely a, an older woman's purse gun. We can agree yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't even, this is too, I think this is even too, maybe too small to be a carrying rifle or a carrying pistol. I think you want something a little bit bigger than that. But uh, yeah, yeah, you put that in a purse and you, you kind of lock it away. Um, and so uh, she also had his mustard stain on her. Okay, so that was, that's funny. I like that. Um, yeah, <laughs> these people are like insanely, Old. insanely wealthy. This is like an absurdly large house. Um, yeah. Now, I don't have as much of an issue with the guy, right? This, right. to me, through the Constitution, is what guns are for, 
right? Yeah, absolutely. Protect your your you know your home, your investments, whatever yeah. it might be, right? This is what got family. Right. He didn't home point at anybody. Family. Yeah. He has good trigger discipline. So I don't yeah. think he's very well trained, but he's holding it at the hip. He's not. He's, he has a gun. Obviously, he's threatening, but it's not the most threatening way. I, on the other hand, the woman should have been should have been inside. No, I, 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 yeah, I mean, but the woman should have been inside. She has a finger on the trigger. She's pointing it at people. She uh, muzzle sweeps him multiple times, which is where you yep. you have the gun up and you yep. cross it past someone, yep. right? That she's dangerous. He yep. is outside, you know, just to make sure shit doesn't happen in, in his yard. Which yep. again, this to me, this in the Constitution is exactly what what the right to own firearms is for. To um, bear arms and be able to protect your life and the lives of those you care about and correct. your property is one hundred percent. She looks like a loose important. handle. Um, uh, that is, that's my issue. She needs to have been inside, <laughs> not because she's a woman, but because she has very poor trigger discipline. Um, she should not be pointing the weapon at people. That's it's absolutely absurd. Let me tell. Let me just paint the hypothetical. What was going on? He was asleep on the couch, right? And uh, and she was making guest, a sandwich, and she got mustard on herself. Clearly, this whole thing kicks off. He he jumps up like a dad would. He's like, "What the?" And he's been waiting. He's been training for this moment his entire dadhood life, right? I don't comes know. Comes outside. Yeah, yeah. Comes outside, ready to go. Got to protect the wife and the little and the little dog. But I agree with you. She was the dangerous one in the scenario. Absolutely. And actually, you know what's really strange about this is that. So this is where the two sides come in, right? Because the audio, you hear the protesters talking back to them. In this instance, if you are the protester organizer, one, you guys are already breaking the law, right? That's clear. Yeah. But yeah. someone has to step up and say, hey, that guy is a gun, is, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the plan is to march directly to the mayor's house yeah, and yeah, not yeah. to we, bother we any other family. private citizens. But this dude, like you said, has a gun. Let's keep it moving, right? So unless you're trying to become a martyr, which no one's going to feel bad for you in this scenario, right? Because you're all going to jail at this point. I'm sorry. It's just the truth, man. You're yeah, all going to jail. And this, is, and this is what I'm saying. There is no victimless. Justice does not come at the expense of you. I know these people are millionaires and we don't feel bad for them. right? But at the same time. Nobody was going to jail that lived in their house if they would have popped one of those people with those guys. With those um, people got too lippy. So, if they would have, if Maybe. they would have been on their on their property, I don't know what the yeah. the um what the stand laws are in. I don't know what the stand your ground laws are in Missouri, right? Yeah. I don't I don't quite know that, but most likely is if uh if a number of them had come out of the property and he shot one, I believe he'd be okay. Um. Yeah. Not that I agree with it, right? I don't think that kind of violence is is okay. Um, obviously, if they're approaching the house and trying to break in, that's a that's a different story. But um, right. but if they're just walking by, yeah, obviously you don't want to just start picking headshots. Like, right, 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 or right, 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 right. Or like but that. you know, if they're gonna walk by, I get being outside with the weapon. Um, yeah, I I get I get wanting to stand your ground for your property. I get all of that, uh, and yeah. I don't think these guys should be. Tar it's it's gonna sound so fucking stupid. I don't think they should be vilified the way that they are. No, I mean um, they've made them. The, the wife has made herself very memeable, you know, with the uh, the leggings and marching around with her hit, hand on her hip, pointing the gun. At yeah, 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 that for sure. And I think again, I I am okay with him standing out there, guns at the hip. Um, yeah. you know, trigger triggers off the finger. She has her trigger on the finger. I guarantee that thing doesn't have. A, it, it probably, if it has a safety, it probably has a. Uh, um, a grip safety where you have to you know squeeze the grip hard enough and the safety comes off. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Here's what the real tragedy is here. Why does this multimillionaire have the single most stock AR-15 I've ever seen in my entire life? I have identified exactly which gun it is, by the way. Because people that rich only stay that rich by only splurging on the things they must absolutely okay, splurge so on. That's a eleven hundred dollar AR fifteen. Yeah. But it he doesn't a, need what do you what do you want? Just gotta have a street scope on there? What you, know, uh, you know what? Okay, so he has a carry handle on it and iron sights. Get rid of the iron sights. Get yourself a get yourself a, some sort of red dot, maybe a holographic. You know, you want a different pistol grip. You need probably need a better lightweight stock, right? Maybe different, Listen, different. What are you different, what are you gonna upsell this poll, man? <laughs> yes. You know what happened when they went to the gun shop? The guy was like, give her a handgun. You need this, right? Get out of this. Place it is right it now. is <laughs> definitely, and I think I've I think I've properly identified it. It is definitely a Colt AR fifteen. 
stock is but a stock is it took me a while to even find the stock one on the website <laughs> the crazy thing about this whole situation is because it leads me into another one we can bounce back and forth but kill two subjects so another mayor who would say it's going to be a summer of love we're just going to let people do whatever they the want to do this? philly uh, uh chaz the, <laughs> the in seattle so when they finally and this you got to get the chronological i'm being more i'm being feud here i know i, I mean know, I I know. It, but uh the minute they decided to march to her house, <laughs> guess what happened three days later? Chaz was completely emptied out. She just literally did a presser like, it's time for people to go home. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, man, I, that, that can only happen for so long, right? <laughs> We're talking about the uh, the Chaz, what are, what are they called? The autonomous zone in the middle oh, of fucking yeah. like Seattle or some shit. Yeah, they um, changed it to a chop at one point. There was a warlord running around. And a more serious note, two young boys were killed there, apparently. Oh. Yeah, that's so, tragic as well. Yeah, a couple of rapes and uh, yeah, cha- yeah. The, the utopic society turned out to be uh, awful because when you put a person in in a position of power, they will abuse that. That exactly. is that is pr- proof in the pudding for sure. See, this yeah. is why you just vote for me and Zach. We got the information. Whoa, I mean, whoa, obviously, whoa, whoa, whoa. obviously, I cannot our, run for our, office during our ascent to power. There, there would obviously be a skirmish, a skirmish between us, and we'll split the country in half. But vote for us until we get there. You're okay until we get to that. Power. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to run on a platform of uh, of uh, municipality run internet. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to have right. fiber. We're laying fiber for everybody. We're fixing right. all the fucking potholes in the road. And we're legalizing right. weed everywhere. So Zach's going for laziness, infrastructure, and free internet. My platform would be this. Vote for me. I'll tell you whatever you need to hear. And once I'm in power, if you try to remove me, I'll destroy everything. I will literally wire the entire country up to destroy. And if you ever march towards my house, I will burn this whole thing down. <laughs> Oh my god! I love that you threw that in there. <laughs> Zach's running on on laziness, infrastructure, and free internet. <laughs> I mean, that's true. That's true. Like all the things you need to be an effective. More body. racetracks. <laughs> More racetracks. Do I honestly do think that uh, that is a great platform to run on? Like free internet for everyone. Like. Dude, You're that, and not that's, even that's, not only internet because you gotta imagine like this is like what is the infrastructure needed to do fiber right? We probably yeah. have like a significant portion of it done already. Someone just has to fork over the money to lay fucking fiber. We cut ten percent out of the military funding. They won't even notice it, right? We'll have to spend nine million less dollars in fucking cups, and we'll yeah. uh, we'll throw that towards fiber infrastructure for the U.S. and we'll reclaim one of the fa- we'll be the fastest fucking internet in the world, dog. Like, yeah. this is where the shit came from. We're going to keep it home, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. So we got elderly people yield, wielding guns. <laughs> Very stock. I'm disappointed in that, man. I'm disappointed. I don't own any firearms, but I would definitely not own that one. <laughs> Listen, we're living, as in Dave Chappelle said, the age of the spin. So if you see some internet stuff, where you, a video up on the internet, please make sure you watch the entire clip. Because I remember when that check. first... I remember when that thing first came out, everyone was like, look at these people aiming these guns at all these protesters. I was like, man, that looks like a house. I'm like, are they protesting yeah. in some in front of someone's house? And then, of course, the Internet turned on me for a little while. I'm like, no, I'm just trying to say that's a house. So if they're protesting in front of the house, these people do have a right to come out and say, hey, don't cross the line. Keep the protest going. Now, it's another thing if uh, Rick and Morty showed up to like you know chop and they started yielding their guns everywhere like, right yeah right, that, right. that's a totally different thing man. right oh what dude gilbert burns tested positive for covid19 yes he did ladies and gentlemen gilbert burns you're hearing it here first tested positive for covid19 out of the title shot versus kamaru uzman no replacement will be had the fight has been scrapped ladies and gentlemen this is maybe one of the more depressing things i've ever heard in my entire life um so obviously Holloway Volkanovski gets bumped up to the uh main event. Main event. Which I don't dude, you know how good this card is that the Usman burnt, which is gonna be when that fight happens, it'll be better than the Usman versus Covington fight, in my opinion. Um yeah. that there's still Volkanovski Holloway two, which is gonna be incredible. Yeah. I think Volkanovski wins this one, by the way. Jan Peter Jan versus Jose Aldo. I think Aldo is going to win those. It's against better judgment. Uh, Jessica Andrade, Rose Namajunas. I love anytime Rose fights. 
Um, yeah. Amanda Rebus versus Paige. I fuck. I don't care about that fight. Um, Volkan Ozumir is fighting. Like the undercard is not that great, but it's uh it's still like such a fantastic card. Oh, it's gonna be a great time. There's no doubt about it. And uh, all we gotta do is keep the card together for the rest of it. But what are you gonna do? You, you know, yeah. Yeah. How do you keep people? Uh, yeah. Uh, how do you because you know the fighters are still some of them are peaking right now and they're still you know they're getting ready for a cut so they have to be out doing at least their, their road work, their road sure. work and stuff and stuff like that uh hopefully they can get that rescheduled and hopefully uh yeah let's get it rescheduled for sure give uh Gilbert burns Burn. as much need much time as he needs to recover um you know he may be asymptomatic like uh who's the other guy who tested positive um can't remember Jacare. Jacare, yeah, yeah. Is ja- Jacare doing okay? I don't know if we heard anything. Yeah, full, full recovery, full recovery. Everyone's doing okay so. in this household. Uh, Gilbert Burns got two little boys, so uh, definitely want him to be doing okay. Two little boys and a wife, so yeah. definitely want him to be doing sure. okay. And, sure. uh, they'll get this thing whole, whole thing rescheduled. I'm still giving much props to Dana White and the, actually forget Dana White. I'm giving much props to the entire team over <laughs> at UFC <laughs> because like they're the, you know he's Dude, the visionary. Doing a lot of but testing. They're doing a lot of testing and. They are doing it extremely well. And again, I will not let you people forget that they came back first. Absolutely. You know, I don't they know. came back first. I believe I saw a way of, of a breakdown of what their testing was. I think it's like yeah. the start of the last week of training camp, uh, the start of the weight cut, uh, or not even not the weight cut. Uh, that's later. Um, before they get on the flight to fly wherever they have to go, they get tested. That's where Gilbert Burns was tested positive. When they land, when they arrive yeah. at Fight Island, when they arrive at the hotel, when the weight cut starts at yeah. weigh-in, and then I believe again before the fight. Yeah. And then before they leave Fight Island, they test them again before they send them home. Yeah. And it's like, and that's perfect because I think they're, uh, I don't know where, they, obviously I think they're using Quest Labs or one of the other uh, places here, but I don't know where they're getting the test verified over there. But um, I would assume they'd be, be using USADA, right? Like. Couldn't, no, they actually do, to do the actual screening, so they have to send it out to a lab. That's where the right, situation is. Where... has a lab, right? That, where yeah, do they, they find all to... of the results for? No, so they were using. I think they were using Quest, but it's okay. like a two-day turnaround, so they would have to send the sample somewhere over in Abu Abu Dhabi, unless they bring a lab there. I, that could be a part of the infrastructure yeah, plan. No, I, I I don't exactly know what the full infrastructure plan is, but I'm assuming because th- he got tested right before he got on the plane and tested positive. So they must have something oh, sh- that fucking tells you immediately, which Wait, is that no fu- one knows. That's this uh, that this Saturday. That's next week, right? Yeah. Well, he's gonna be out there for a week. He, he got to get adjusted Ugh. to the time zone, the heat, the humidity. You know everything. Oh, out Abu Dhabi is horrible. Well, I've never so. been. I'm clearly speaking from experience here. Um, no, no, no. I whenever <laughs> I'm sorry. Talk, talk, right? <laughs> I was looking for that one. <laughs> so, so, so poor. <laughs> I have to dry on that one, my friend. Uh, so I, speaking of, speaking of positive tests, uh, your 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 patron saint, man. Uh, my patron, <laughs> my patron saint, Brian Callen. Has tested positive <laughs> along with Brendan Schaub. <laughs> the team over at T Fat K or uh, the fighter and the kid have tested positive yeah. after their uh, stint this list last weekend in Austin for their uh, for their comedy tour because you know some states are open back up for whatever reason. Um, actually, we haven't mentioned that like we had like forty thousand yeah. new cases yeah. yesterday or some shit. So, All fake news. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so Shab and Callan have both tested positive. Shab has spoken out against all of it very clearly, um, against the use of face masks, against the use of social distancing, against the, the uh, p- places getting shut down. He said just open everything back up and let, let life take its course, I believe is, is kind of a quote, a uh, summarized quote at least. Um, so, yeah, he is tested positive for COVID. We'll see how that changes his opinion. Um, fairly healthy guy, you know. Obviously, I think he has two or three kids. In a while, yeah. so obviously we we want him to be healthy, and Callan I believe also has children, um. So yeah, we, we wish them both the uh, the best of luck and recovery, but recovery. yeah, for sure. Uh, but it's still, man, I just I don't think I think with someone with people with that big of a platform, they it's almost a a civil duty to mm-hmm. kind of keep up with the status status quo of of the way that we were moving, right? Absolutely. Uh, Obviously, we were super hard hit here in New York. Everyone quarantined. We use face masks. We use social distancing. We're maybe one of the stricter, stricter states on it up front, and uh, we've at least flattened the curve. I think we've had another another uh, outbreak recently from someone yeah. coming back from Florida. 
um, which has now, which has sprung the, if you're coming from certain states, you have to quarantine for two weeks uh, yeah. rule that we're doing here now. So it's, it's very crazy. interesting. It's, it's crazy. So two, uh, a few things that come up for me with the uh, Brendan Schaub thing, right? So obviously you're allowed to say whatever you want on any platform as long as it's within those plat- platforms guidelines. But I do agree that when you have a platform that's growing, especially his own personal podcast is growing as quickly as it is. You have a responsibility, even if you disagree with the situation, to represent the data accurately. And that's the one thing that you and I have always agreed on. People don't want to represent data accurately, especially if it yeah. skews the wrong way against their opinion, right? <laughs> and so Brendan Schaub was one of those guys where it's like, I say this with love was an alternative fact or random fact out of context type of guy. And I'm like, Hey, you have to be very, very, very careful of how you do this. Because in my mind, if you're not going to examine the data, uh, honestly, then just say to people like, Hey, preface it always with, this is how I feel. I know what Fauci and the boys are over there saying, I know what the data says, but I don't care about any of that stuff. This is how I feel. Don't present it in a way with this information, some poor, I don't want to say weak mind person, but someone in your your group takes you seriously, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's like it, it, you have to represent. Now, I know that COVID is not the bubonic plague. I understand it does not have. We've had two, uh, there have been two cases on the Russian border with um, of the of the, assumed the, the bubonic plague, by the way. Really? Uh, yep. See now that's some that's some smoke we don't want in our lives. <laughs> that's not, that's not, I don't I don't want no parts of that. No. But here's 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 the problem, right? Like I think the thing that people that they just lean too far left or too far right on these things, and the fact of the matter is, it hasn't been around long enough for to examine for us to examine how it's really going to impact people in the long run. We don't know what it's going to look like five years removed from recovery, 10 years removed from recovery. We don't know what the impact on children is going to be after recovery, young people, et cetera, et cetera, and on and on and on. So, yeah, I, I a hundred percent agree, man. It's really the point here is, is if you have a platform that large, man, I get that you want to, you could speak out, you know, any way that you want, but you, I think you got to be careful with it, with a platform, yeah. the size that he has, uh multiple multiple podcasts that are all growing um you know he's on what three or four podcasts now that that are growing and and he's a huge platform man he is a he is a a big platform i think you got to be careful because he's definitely skewed people into not not doing anything And and i guarantee someone in his following has has gotten covid and has probably passed away from covid uh because it's like yo fucking what what was his nickname big brown said that uh, no, oh, it, was, no, it, was, it was that. No, it was a different guy. Um, Rob's <laughs> friend. Um, okay. And it has just, you know, I'm not, like, I'm not laughing at the big black. I'm just, dude, that's, <laughs> it was like big that, black, big black. You know, like, I don't get upset over celebrity deaths. Like, whatever. I didn't know these people. That one was like, fuck, dude. That one hit. It, it, it did they like, reconcile before his death? Wait, finish yes, your point. Yeah, I'm no, sorry. No, he did. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. I don't remember where my point was going. I fucking lost it. <laughs> Got to be able to strike to my big black. Um, yeah, he was working out out of um, he was running his uh, apparel company out of the Fantasy Factory. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, they had good. reconciled. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think they ended the show yeah. by the way because um, Mr. Boykins was having a child, and he wanted to spend more time with his family. If I remember correctly, it's funny, man. I, I don't know what uh, Sterling Steelo Brown would do. Without the show, but you talk about a guy that has remained humble like throughout that entire process. Like him and Chanel, like Rob really takes care of them. Like yeah, they, yeah, yeah, for sure. Chanel has been a long time. She's she's been there since the beginning of Fan- or Fantasy Factory, which is what you know, probably a decade now. Has she, was she at the beginning of Fantasy yeah, Factory? Yeah, she was hired as the receptionist Rob? right at the beginning. You know, it's crazy uh, when they did the first episode of uh, ridiculousness it was another girl on the show woman sorry it was another woman on the show and uh she disappeared like the little sister from family matters she was there one episode and then she was gone really so I was like, yeah it was weird it's very strange it was like their that. pilot yeah pilot 2009 episode. no so Good 11 goodness. years for sure I, I know where Zach was going. Here at Talking with a Dad, we will always be responsible with our opinions and our observations. That's of not the facts. where I was going, but I mean, it sounds good to me. 
let's get the heck out of here, buddy. I got to go make some popcorn, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to another wonderful episode of Talking with the Dad here. Find us on our new platform, Anchor, and our new RSS feed to be on all of your uh, podcasting apps. We love you, audio listeners. Uh, you find us on the YouTube channel, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the website, all Talking with the Dad. Thank you again for listening and have a fantastic evening.